This is one of the most powerful trends out there. So first off, read this disclaimer carefully. And in this video, we will look at a very specific and overall portfolio. And that is the stationary robotics portfolio, which is outperforming the S&P 500, you know, you know, significantly. I have two robotic categories. Yeah, I have stationary robots and the mobile robots. And in this video, we will focus on the stationary. It's important to bear in mind that when you want to enter a bullish position, you ideally want to find those who have a lot of room to run. If you want to put on a short bearish position, then you would ideally look at those who have gone too far. So that's, uh, you know, how to think about it. Okay, so in this entire portfolio here, you can see that there are 11 robotics uh, stocks. You have medical robotics, industrial 3D printing, automated systems, and test equipment. So the key denominator here is that th these are robots that they are stationary, you know, like they are in a specific place, they do not move. So that's like the key distinction I draw here. And, and, and I do think that these are two very separate kind of robots. Because as a matter of fact, you have robots in your home right now. Um, as an example, a washing machine is a robot. It is a stationary robot. A dishwasher is also actually a robot. But they are distinctly different. Okay, so Fanuc, they are in the industrial robotics uh, space. You can see here that uh, the performance is pretty decent. Um, not that far away from uh, the highs here. And you can see some of the best performance here is actually from Rockwell Automation, 111% from the lows. And the one that is closest to its 52-week uh, high, that is Yash Yashkawa Electric. So let's look now at Fanuc. Okay. So one Fanuc, the three businesses of FA, Robot, and Robomachine are unified with service as one Fanuc to provide innovation and reassurance to manufacturing sites around the world. And here you can see some of the robots they have. Here are their locations. So let's look, let's just read this blurb. So Fanuc has consistently pursued the automation of factories since 1956, when it succeeded in the development of the servo mechanism for the first time in the Japanese private sector. Now this is a Japanese company and, and Japan is a world leader in robotics. Fanuc's businesses is comprised of three pillars. FA robot and robo machine. The FA business encompasses basic technologies consisting of NCs, numerical controls, servo servos, and lasers, which are also applied to the robot and robo machine business businesses. In addition, Fanuc's flagship Internet of Things product field system, which is an open platform, has been introduced as a new business. So basically, I mean, they are into they have exposure to some of the most uh, you know future proof uh, trends. So this is this is a, this this is a really great business. So let's now first look at the seasonality of the stock. So here you can see, you know, the percentage of months in which it closes higher than it opened. You can see that October is actually a pretty decent month, but November is weak. Let's go here to the spy and compare it. You know, of looking at the relative performance here. Outperformance vis a underperformance, and you can see here that you know this trend is that September and October are characteristically strong for a Fanuc, but November is actually one of the weakest months. So that's something to take into account. That's the seasonality. So here is the chart. So when you look at the chart, um, even though we aren't that far away from the 52 week high, you can see here that we are actually quite some distance away from the all time high. So from this high here to where we are now, that is minus 35%. And the reason why I think Fanuc is very interesting at these levels is that we are, we have basically been in this monstrous consolidation range. So basically, I mean, if you bought Fanuc here, like literally like here in, in August 2011, you, you would like have, it hasn't gone anywhere, anywhere from you, for you. I mean, of course, there, there were many great exit opportunities and also entry opportunities, but basically it's been stuck in this monstrous range. And the saying is, the longer a stock goes, any, any security really goes sideways, the bigger the eventual breakout. It seems pretty clear to me, looking at all of these years, that there is a floor around here. So this region definitively is a buying zone. 
Another thing that jumps at me is that the red 200 week moving average is very consistent. Test, test, test. So when it functions as a support level, usually it can trigger, well it has characteristically triggered a strong rally. When it is a resistance level, it has been a shorting opportunity. Here we test, find support, monster rally. Here we break down and here we just goof around, uh, really struggling, uh, which created uh, numerous shorting opportunities. So now at this very point, it, it is becoming very interesting because again, we are above this red 200 week moving average. And as we have seen before, if we are able to actually find support here, it can be a trigger for quite a significant rally. Hence, it's a very binary situation. If we find support here, it can become a strong rally. You could of course enter a bullish position and you can have a stop we know below the 200 week moving average because it, it has been so consistent. Um, if you look at RSI, let's see if it's something jumps at us. So we can see here that oversold levels uh, have been relatively consistent uh, buying signals. As far as overbought, there have been times when it has been a clear signal to go short, but not consistent enough. Let's look at the correlation. There's basically no correlation here with the S&P 500. That, that is interesting. Looking here at daily data points. So we are above many of the key moving averages. Um, because it has been stuck in this monstrous consolidation range, you can see that even the 200 day moving average in red has been thrown around like a ragdoll, which is one of the reasons, reasons why I think that the longer, the, the very long term weekly 200 week moving average has become more reliable. Because this is one of the issues with um, a consolidation is that it messes up uh, the moving averages. Looking at RSI, uh, this, it seems like overbought and oversold levels have been more, more reliable uh, trading signals here on the dailies. There's an 89% correlation here, positive actually on the daily data point with the S&P 500. Okay, so let's look here at sax.com. So Fanuc has a number three hold, a D value score. Degrowth and C momentum. Some of the fundamentals here are not like particularly exciting. Uh, the industry rank, industrial automation and robotics is in the bottom 17%. Market cap 38 billion US dollars, big company. Dividend is 1.2%, which it is an okay dividend. Okay. Yeah, so to sum up my take here on the theme, okay, so the theme, the, the theme stationary robots is robotics is something I'm very bullish on long term. Quite clearly, clearly, um, whenever you look at any security, you need to think about what is the best entry opportunity and when is the best exit opportunity. So you always have these things in mind because Fanuc has been a fantastic long for some people, a fantastic short for other people. It was all based on timing. Long term, I'm very bullish on the, on this theme and I'm also bullish on Fanuc. The big question is that we have this monstrous consolidation range and we have seen it has been uh, triggered, triggering, triggering some major rallies before. Let's look here at the weekly data points just to look at how big some of the rallies were. Like this rally here, all of a sudden you have a 45 ish percent. This rally here flew up. Uh, 76%, which is quite uh, substantial. Whatever you do, of course, don't fight the trend and may the trend be with you.